Hello there future ACCAs, this is Vishnu Vijay, a proud Fintrama and your faculty for ACCA. So folks, in this session we will be covering a really common struggle faced by most ACCA students that is basically in relation to understanding the CBE environment. So why exactly does an issue exist in the first place? Well, this is basically because we are all used to the traditional method of writing the exam using a pen and paper, isn't it? However, with the advancement of technology as well as with the increased expectation of employers within modern business industry, ACCA has planned to in increase the employability of their students by introducing CBE exams. Okay, folks, so that is exactly why we have to be, we have to attend CBE exams in the first place. However, the thing is that there is a valuable resource provided by ACCA which most students are missing out of. Okay, folks, what exactly is this resource? This is basically the ACCA question practice platform available within the ACCA's website. So, what we are about to discuss is about all the functionalities that are available within the ACCA practice platform and of course all the tips and tricks okay, folks, that you can use in order to prepare efficiently and effectively for your upcoming ACCA exams. So, let's take a look at as to how to access the platform first of all, shall we? So, what exactly are we dealing with here? We have the homepage of ACCA as you can see here and of course what you have to do is you just have to go to the my ACCA option right over here and then log in to my ACCA using your credentials. So let me just quickly input my credentials and log in. There we go. And there you have it guys. As you can see here I logged into my ACCA. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna Scroll down a bit and click on view progress over here. Okay, folks. So as you can see here, I have completed all my exams, so I don't need to uh, attend anymore. However, I can still access the practice platform from by clicking on this particular link. Okay, folks, so just click on this particular link to launch the CBE practice platform. Okay, folks, as simple as that. Uh -uh. Sorry for interruption. But do you know what is the difference between you and the more aware version of you? Your more aware version would subscribe to our channel Fintram Global and press the bell icon. For keep getting these videos and these updates, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon right now. And then you will be taken into this particular page. Okay, folks. So this is basically the home page of the CBE practice platform. Okay, folks, so what you can do is, well, you can do, a, you can do a lot of things in this particular platform in you know, order to prepare for your exam in an efficient and effective manner. Okay, folks. So first of all, let's understand as to what all things do we have in this particular page, shall we? So basically, we have quite a few options over here, isn't it? We have the home page over here, and then we have the mark option, results, and performance related options as well. And then we have the resources or the subjects available within the catalog that has been provided here, isn't it? So for each subject, we will have a blank workspace to practice more questions on. And of course, some resources provided by ACC themselves, such as the uh, official resources like past exam library, the practice exams, as well as specimen exams as well. Okay, folks, and these are available for different variants as well. So keep this in mind. So as you can see here, I've chosen the uh, advanced audit and assurance paper over here. And yeah, I've allo allocated a lot of uh, resources to myself as well. Okay, folks, so how do you allocate a particular exam to yourself? Well, that's an easy question, isn't it? So all you have to do is you just have to click on one of these options. So let's just say that I have to allocate a practice exam to myself. Okay, folks, if that is what you require, then all you have to do is you just have to go to practice exams. So I'm just going to allocate the uh, AAA International Practice Exam 1. Okay, folks. So I'm just going to click on assign over here and then the exam will show up on this particular tab. So okay, folks, we have uh, the international specimen exam and the practice exam should be over this particular option. As you can see here, I have allocated the exam over here, isn't it? So this is basically the AAA international practice exam one. So in order to start my exam, I can just, you know, do the basic option that is just to click on start. That's basically it. And of course, I will be taken to the first page of instructions of this particular exam. And of course, we'll be discussing about all of these functionalities as well. Okay, folks, so don't worry about that. So I'm just going to click on next over here. 
these are just the basic instructions that you have for the exam. That's basically it. And we have the uh, exam summary page as well, isn't it? Where the structure of the exam will be mentioned as simple as that. So I'm just going to, when I click on next, a notification will appear uh, asking me as to whether I'm ready to begin this exam or not. Okay, folks, so I'm just going to click on yes. There we go. And then I will be taken to section A of this particular question paper. I'm just going to click on next. And then that will take me to the first question over here. Okay, folks, of course, this is basically a strategic professional level paper. And therefore, this is basically the layout of the particular exam that you will have within your main exam as well. Okay, folks, on, on the uh, main page, you will have the background of the scenario that you're dealing with. And of course, you will have exhibits on the right hand side, as well as the requirements, as well as the response options as well, isn't it? However, when it comes to the skill level papers, it would be slightly different and we have covered all of these skill level uh, functionalities as well as the strategic professional level functionalities as well in detail in our sessions as well. Okay, folks, so remember that. So, uh, as you can see here, uh, we have quite a few options, isn't it? And let me tell you guys, the response option is kind of similar for both the exams as well. Okay, folks, be it skill level or be it the strategic professional levels. So let's take a look at those functionalities real quick and then move on, shall we? So in all the uh, ACC, CBE exams of both uh, skill level as well as strategic professional levels, we will have a word, word processor as well as a spreadsheet available to us. Okay, folks, so what all functionalities do we have within the word processor? Let's take a look at that. Well, first of all, as you can see here, we have an icon over here, isn't it? That says reset. Okay, folks, it might seem like a particular option to save your answer. However, that is not a functionality that is useful in the exam, isn't it? So that is not exactly what it does. Okay, folks, what this particular option does is it resets your entire answer. Okay, folks, what does that mean? Let's say that you've typed in your answer. Okay, folks, I'm just going to randomly select some test, control C it and control V it over here. That's a cool expression, isn't it? Control V it. Okay, so I'm just going to paste all my answers here. So let's assume that I've written all my answers within this response option. Now, if I click on reset, a warning will appear. And what exactly is it stating? Are you sure you want to reset? Resetting will remove any response you have made on this item and reset back to an unanswered state. What does that mean? That basically means that all your answers will be removed. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea here. Of course, I think you can retain it by clicking on undo. However, yeah, that's not possible. Okay, folks, so that's basically something that you have to point out as well. Okay, folks, now keep that in mind. So we have the cut, copy as well as paste options available. However, instead of using these options, what you can do is you can just use the shortcuts for it, isn't it? For cut, what would be the shortcut? The shortcut would be control X, isn't it? So since, since we are moving items, it will be control X. For copy, we have control C. And for paste, we have control V as well. Okay, folks. So I'm just going to demonstrate this. So all you have to do is you just have to click control C for this particular text and control V it uh, where you want to. Okay, folks, that will paste, uh, make a copy of the same text that you've selected as simple as that. And of course, if you're a working professional, you will be quite used to buy, uh, used to it by now as well, isn't it? So that's basically it. So that's, that's are basically some basic shortcuts. And of course, you have the undo as well as redo options as well. Okay, folks, this is just to, you know, undo the things that you've done or typed as simple as that. And of course, if you want to, uh, you know, change your mind and redo the same thing, you can just click on control Y instead of using that option. Okay, folks, so the shortcuts for undo and redo is basically this. Okay, folks, for undo, it's basically control Z, whereas for redo, it is control Y. Okay, folks, as simple as that. Now, we also have another functionality known as the find and replace option as well. Now, this is kind of an interesting option that we have. Okay, and we, we could use the same option. We do have the same option available for Microsoft Word as well. Okay, folks. So uh, you just have to, what you have to do is the control for uh, find and replace does not work within the platform. So instead, we will have to manually select it. Okay, folks. So how exactly do we use this option? Well, let me talk about that, shall we? So basically, this particular option is used to find a particular text and change it into something else. Okay, folks, that's basically it. So as you can see here, I've written the word control in its short form, isn't it? 
So if I want to change it to the full length or full uh, word that is control, then all I have to do is I just have to find the control uh, wording from my answer and then I'll replace it with the full form of it. Okay, folks, C-O-N-T-R-O-L. Okay, folks, this is how I want to replace the text within the entire answer sheet. Okay, folks, all I have to do is I just have to find, click on find, and then click on either replace or replace all. Okay, folks, replace would just replace the first item that the particular uh, system sees, whereas replace all will replace all the particular function that it sees. Okay, folks, as simple as that. So this is basically what the find and replace option is all about. And then of course you have some formatting options such as bold, italic, as well as underline. This is basically to format your text. For example, if you're providing a heading for your answer, you will have to format it slightly, isn't it? So we can just, uh, instead of using this option or just using your cruiser to just click on these options, what you can do is you can yet again use shortcuts here as well. Okay, folks, what kind of shortcuts can you use here? Well, you can use Control B to bold, Control I to italic, and Control U to underline that particular text. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea here. And then, of course, you also have the strike through option if you want to strike through some text as well. The same option is available over here as well. Okay, folks, and what else? You have the subscript as well as superscript. This is especially important when it comes to the uh, PM or FM exams, isn't it? So that's basically the thing. Uh, and then we have the text formatting, sorry, clear formatting option as well, isn't it? So why exactly do we use this option for? Well, this is so that we can clear the formatting that we have done. Okay, folks, just select the text for which you want to remove the formatting and just click on this option as simple as that. Okay, folks, so the text will come back to its normal format as simple as that. So that's basically as to what these functions are. Then we have the paragraph options as well, as well as uh, if you click on this drop down arrow, you have heading options as well. Okay, folks, if you want to convert this particular text into a heading, all you have to do is you just have to go to this option and click on the size of the heading that you want it to. Okay, folks, as simple as that. And then, of course, you also have an option to input certain tables. For example, if you want to showcase some calculations in a bit more formatted manner, or in, a, in a bit more clean manner, you will have to use tables as well, isn't it? So in order to input table, all you have to do is just click on this drop down arrow right here and then select the number of columns and rows. Okay, folks, as simple as that. And then, of course, you have the alignment options, which is kind of the basic things, isn't it? So that's basically it. If you want to align the heading to the center, I'm just going to click on this. That's basically it. And of course, you have also the option to provide bullet points, your answer in bullet points as well. Okay, folks, as simple as that. And if you want to use numbered bull bullet points, you just have to click on the next option. That's basically it. And of course, we have the increase and decrease intent option, as well as the print option, which won't be that much useful in the exam, isn't it? So keep this in mind. Okay, folks. So that's basically all the functionalities that are available within the word, uh, in the word processor. Okay, folks, so keep this in mind. So I'm just going to close this and move on to another response option. That is basically the spreadsheet. Okay, folks. So the spreadsheet is yet again a common response option that we have for all the papers, isn't it? So what all functionalities are available here? Let's take a look at that, shall we? So folks, we also have the similar options in this particular response option as well, isn't it? We, we have the reset option right here. And then we have cut, copy and paste. And then we have copy or format painter option over here as well. This is basically to copy paste the same formatting of one cell to the other. Okay, folks, so that's basically it. And yet again, we have the undo as well as redo option. We already know the shortcuts for that. And if you have to increase or decrease the size of your screen, then you can just change it over here as well. Okay, folks. So that's basically the idea here. And then if you want to change the size of the selected text, for example, I'm just going to type Fintran Global over here, as simple as that. So if I, if I want to change the size of this particular test, I just have to choose this option. Okay, folks. So that's basically it. And then you have yet again bold, italic, and underline. And of course, you also have the option to color the particular text that you've written in a particular cell as well. Okay, folks, you can also provide background colors as well. As simple as that. So that's all for the coloring options. Now moving on to the uh, next options that we have. We have the alignment options over here. We can align it to the uh, left, right, as well as center as well. And of course, we also have the option to format our numbers in a structured manner as well. Okay, folks, for example, let's say that I'm typing the number 23.56789. Okay, folks, as simple as that. 
Now, if I want to format this particular option, then all I have to do is I just have to click on this particular option right here. And I'm just going to showcase the decimal points up to two decimal places and put some commas where appropriate as well. Okay, folks, let's just change the number one zero. There we go. As you can see here, a comma has been inputted manually. Okay, folks, that's basically it. Okay, so that's basically all about that particular function. Of course, we also have the option to structure it into a currency as well. Okay, folks, as simple as that. And of course, you also have the option to convert it into a percentage. So let's say that I'm going to take another percentage known as, uh, let's say 2.5 is basically the number that I've written here. If I want to convert this, okay, so let me just use a lower value, let's say 0.5, okay, folks. If I want to convert this into a percentage format, I just have to click on over here, okay, folks, as simple as that. So I'm just going to showcase it to two decimal places, as simple as that. So 0.5 is basically 50%, isn't it? As simple as that. And if I want to convert a particular fraction, well, that all I have to do is I just have to click on uh, 2.5 over here, and then click on this particular option, and then as simple as that. Okay, folks, that's basically how you do this. And of course, you also have formatting for dates as well. Okay, folks, so this, these are basically the functionalities or basic functionalities that are available within the spreadsheet as well. Okay, folks, just to uh, familiarize with these, that's basically it. And we also have some really interesting and useful functions within the uh, platform itself, isn't it? So we have the symbols options to input the symbols that are necessary for your particular exam. For example, if you're attending the UK tax variant exam, if that's the case, then definitely you will have to use pound rate, isn't it? So definitely you can use the pound symbol over here in such a situation. However, normally we use the dollar sign. So yeah, that's available in the keyboard. So we don't necessarily have to insert that. And of course, another really useful, uh, I would say option within the platform would be the highlight option, isn't it? So when you're reading through the scenario, it's always a, a good practice to highlight the relevant information that you would require for your answer, isn't it? So what you would do is you could just select the particular text that you want to highlight and then click on this highlight option. That's basically it. So let's say that you change your mind if you want to remove the highlight, then select the text again, click on this drop down arrow right here and click on remove highlight. As simple as that, isn't it? That's basically it. We have this track through option, which we already looked at as to what the functionality is. If you are done with a particular requirement, maybe you can just drag it off. Okay, folks, that's basically something uh, or some methods to which we can use it. And of course, we can get access to the calculators as well. Okay, folks, we have a standard as well as a scientific calculator available to you within the platform itself. And of course, you can still use your own calculator within the exam as well. Okay, folks, there's no restriction in that. As long as your calculator does not have the ability to, uh, you know, uh, store or display text. Okay, folks, that's basically it. So. I'm just going to close this. You also have a scratch pad available within your exam where you can, uh, you know, provide your rough writing. So, okay, folks, remember, guys, you should not provide your main answer within a scratch pad or workings within a scratch pad, okay, folks, because the examiner will not be correcting the content that would be provided within your scratch pad, okay, folks. They will only correct those content which are provided within the response options. So, do not write your answer within the scratch pad, okay, folks. So, this is basically for rough writing. That's basically it, okay, folks. So closing this and of course, close all function is yet again a functionality that we have. This is basically, uh, you know, specifically to the uh, strategic professional exams. Uh, if I, let's see, open up too much windows, it seems kind of messy, isn't it? So what I can do is I can just close everything and start from scratch. That's basically it. Okay, folks, all the highlights will not be removed. So don't worry about that. So that's basically it. And of course, we have the common flag off option that we, we're all familiar with from various exams as well, isn't it? As simple as that. Okay, folks. So these are some of the basic functionalities that are available within the exam plat environment. Okay, folks, as simple as that. And of course, a detailed discussion of the exam techniques as well as tips and tricks that you can use for each exam will be provided to you within the uh, sessions itself. Okay, folks, so don't worry about that. So uh, moving on to the next aspect. So I'm just going to click on next over here. And I'm just going to end this exam. Okay, folks, that's basically what I'm going to do. There we go. Click on end exam. Are you sure I want to ex end the exam? Yes, most probably. Okay, folks, so there is a, you know, a double confirmation required over here. Okay, folks, so I'm just going to click on yes. So the exam is now complete, isn't it? So I'm just going to exit from this particular platform back to the home page of the platform as simple as that. So now what can I do? 
Well, I've practiced some questions, okay, I went the ended the exam, and is that it? No, not really, okay, because I'll have to review as to whether the answers that I've entered are correct or not, isn't it? So what you can do is you can just go to the mark tab over here and then access the exam that you've just attended. Okay, folks, we were attending the uh, AAA practice exam one, isn't it? So I'm just gonna go and access that. There we go. And click on, you can click on self mark to mark your own answer. Okay, folks, this is a functionality that you can uh, use to effectively understand as to whether you've written the correct answers or how much marks have you scored as well, isn't it? So that's basically the thing. As you can see here, we have the answers provided in this particular screen. And of course, if you want to view the sample answers, you can just click on this particular screen right here. Okay, folks, and the sample answer is, is basically shown in this particular PDF, as simple as that. Okay, folks, so this is yet again another functionality that you can use as well. Okay, folks, just to understand as to whether you've written everything in the appropriate manner. And of course, how many marks would be available for the content that you've written as well. So this is basically the first question. You can move through to the second as well as third question over here. And this particular format is the same for all particular papers as well, both skill level as well as professional level. Okay, folks, so don't worry about that. So this is basically yet again another really interesting functionality that is available within the practice platform so that you can practice a lot of questions and understand as to whether you have tackled that particular question effectively and efficiently. Okay, folks, so that's basically the idea here. Okay, folks. So this is basically as to what the particular question practice platform is capable of. I'm just going to move back to the home page right here. And of course, after marking your exams, you can just, you know, move on to the results tab, which can showcase all the exams and the results that you've obtained for it. Okay, folks, as simple as that. So that's basically all about the functionalities that are available within the uh, ACC question practice platform. So that's all what I wanted to cover in this particular session. We've looked at all the basic functionalities available within the ACCA's question practice platform, isn't it? So speaking about the question practice platform, we have, of course, some subject specific exam techniques as well as tips and tricks, which we have discussed within our uh, video lectures, respective video lectures for each subject. And of course, our lecturers have also demonstrated how to tackle a particular question within the particular CBE platform within the question marathon as well. Okay, folks, so do take a look at that now. Another really important point that I have to mention is that, as I stated earlier, this is something that most students miss out on, okay, folks? So this is a really effective resource that you can use, you know, to prepare for your upcoming ACCA exam. So don't miss out on that. As we know, question practice is as important as learning the syllabus, okay, folks? So keep on practicing a lot of questions and effectively tackle your exams. So stay tuned for more informative content. This is Vishnu Vijay, signing off for now.